Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another episode of the Daily Crypto News. And today I have for you guys one chart that might literally make you go outside of your house and go scream and destroy some cabinets or something of the sort. It literally broke my mind just looking at this, seeing how accurate it is and how it portrays where the Bitcoin price and I guess the entire crypto market is going to go in the short term. Then again, this video is going to work like this. I'm going to first talk a little bit about what the crypto market is doing before heading over into that very important chart. We'll then head over into all the crypto news that you need to know about today and then talk a little bit more about some charts. So first of all, guys, Bitcoin today is actually moving rather interestingly. Not too much on the upside, not too much on the downside. I would say about 1% is the average here. And we can see that the entire crypto market is up about 0.7% over the daily. And as we've also seen pretty recently here is that XRP and Solana, sometimes ADA, they actually outperform Bitcoin and Ethereum most of the time. Today is not completely true as I guess Ethereum is pumping a little bit more than the majority of these and BNB is actually the crown here or taking the crown at $226 up about 5% over the day. And now because I'm going to show you guys one crazy chart, I'm not going to put the camera so you guys can see this in full HD. And guys, if you enjoy these videos, you know what to do. Press that like button. This is one of the most important charts that you'll see in your entire freaking life and i've talked about this before a couple of times you know where well recently barry silbert also said good news only 709 more days until the next bitcoin halving very often people come to my comment section and say dusty this halving thing it doesn't make sense to me this thing doesn't really work or, or something of the sort just so you guys understand the halving is basically where the bitcoin mining rewards get halved and so the scarcity effect takes place and very often people associate some charts with that to showcase the movement of Bitcoin over time. If you guys remember stock to flow model, it basically factors in scarcity over longer periods of time. And this model right here, the Bitcoin long term chart uh, shared by Sebastiano F. Moon is freaking huge. Why? Well, it was shared in 2018. And I think you'll be surprised as to how accurate it is. Again, it, it, it portrays the values from Bitcoin from all the way back in 2010, all the way again, predicted up to like, let's say 2026 or so. You can see the general line which he predicted. Uh, there's a little bit of a iffy waffy going on right there because, of course, it's not completely absolute. It just is to generally, I guess, speaking, showcase where it's about to head. Um, there can be a little, you know, difference in increments here. And again, the top and bottom, I think, of what should indicate where the price is going to go, um, depending on what we saw back there. So it's basically reflecting whatever price actually we saw right there into the future. And it's not been updated since 2018. So if we now press the play button, we're going to see how the price played out over 2018 May or June actually, up till now about four years later. So right now we are right around this marker. Let's see how close this person was. Look at that. Now to me, it's actually really mind boggling that four years ago, as of this point, we literally hit almost rock bottom. And we literally hit almost the top of the top, which is again is $65,000. And right now we're falling kind of back down a little bit prematurely here. There's, I guess, two major things to say. Either we're going to kind of climb up a little bit again or kind of fall back down towards the trend line at, let's say, 12000 or something of the sort before coming back up even harder over at that point. Um, again, a lot of people are saying that we've hit the top of this halving cycle. But the chart here, looking at it like that, again, it, it should kind of showcase that at the end of the cycle, which should be here. I'm not actually sure what month that is at this point let's see here okay it's not showcasing it anymore let's say about july so maybe next month or so should be where the top is supposed to be before kind of falling back down but it's very interesting to watch um the majority of people that i've spoken to are saying that these cycles do have some sort of effect and that people are looking at it like crazy specifically the bigger funds but yeah it's still a little bit of a 50 50 on whether or not we're going to hit that one hundred thousand dollar mark which again has been put into place four years ago and is um, interpreted with data from over the last, let's say, 12 years by now. It would surely not be too crazy if this actually still happens before we fall back down over the next couple of months here until the fourth halving before the cycle turns back around. Then again, honest talk, what the most important thing is going to be for the crypto space at the, this point, I think, is a Bitcoin spot ETF. And a lot of these people are also talking to Barry Silbert about get this done, get this approved. And honestly, I think they're pretty much right in saying it's the next big step for crypto, getting crazy institutional investments in. Uh, there's actually one thing that I think was interesting as well, posted by CZ, the CEO of Binance. This crypto winter might last for a couple of years as Bitcoin won't see another all-time high for some time, according to CZ. Uh, I want you guys to take this with a grain of salt, as CZ is usually a pretty neutral with the wording and very often he's also stated this on twitter today they misinterpret his statements now i'm not exactly sure what type of interview this comes out from 
But in the way in which I interpret it is saying, hey, it's really not that crazy if we were to keep kind of a low profile on Bitcoin for the next couple of years. And for example, um, except that we've already hit the high of this cycle and are going to be moving down for, let's say, until this point. If I refresh it real quick, I think I get the dates back so I can uh, check it again. I think so, right? Let's quickly check this out. I think I get the dates back if I do that. Um, yeah, let us see. There we go. So then hypothetically, for example, right, stay dormant for another two years or so, um, go in at around the $20,000 mark, for example, before spiking up to, you know, whatever, $200,000, $300,000, just as a given example. But one thing that should remain certain and that I always portray in my videos is I honestly think the crypto prices are going to be going up in longer periods of time. The short term is, however, pretty hard. Uh, then again, there's a lot of these opportunities which we have all the time where we can make money. Uh, one of the ones that I give as a clear example every single time is the tokens that launch on specific launch pad, like for example, Bybit, we always make money on those and it almost always works. So if you don't have a Bybit account yet, you know where to find the link down below, check it out. I also saw one more article and this is actually a really big talking point and we can discuss this in the comment section if you guys want, but I think it's more so interesting for my, my sentiments on the matter. Should bigger companies bail out smaller ones? From a certain perspective, I'm the guy who says absolutely. If they backed up a project at the get go and it's all of a sudden starting to kind of fall back down due to the crypto market not being as popular anymore, I think they sometimes should lay a helping hand because they had some part in it. However, if it's a poor design or it wasn't designed to handle a bear market, should it then survive? And that's my, my bigger question that I've had before. A lot of these lending protocols, for example, I think should be saved because, well, they had some mismanagement, sure, but it's mostly other people that are being hurt, not the platform founders themselves, it's mostly other people. So if you can build them out and let more people have more money, sort of, it's like the, the, the best equilibrium is to help out as much as possible because it also saves yourself, it saves the industry, which, again, you're being a big part of. However, and that's a really big, good concept in question, should you bail out shitty projects? I don't think so. I honestly think a lot of these things which are failing were designed to fail from the get-go. They were just misorchestrated, they were mismanaged um, or whatever. And the same thing for Celsius, same thing for a lot of these other things. I can see why you should manage them and help help them um, because it involves others that are you know, basically trusting the platform. But at the end of the day, even that one, if they help them, I'm, I'm saying like, sure, that's a good idea because Oh man, I'm not the best at phrasing this right now, my, my thoughts. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I think it's in the best equilibrium to help them out as much as possible because it's mostly the people that are being hurt by that, not the platform founders themselves. For a lot of other parts, though, I'm also thinking, no, you shouldn't because they were misdesigned from the get-go. They were taking too much risk, trying to make too much profit on people, and so they should kind of fail. But it's, it's, a, it's a difficult little part. However, if you as an industry leader say, I don't want to help because they're shitty, I can also understand that, right? And so I'm not exactly sure if all should be helped. eBay has doubled down on digital collectibles, buys the NFT marketplace known origin. Pretty cool, right? Not a big fan of this, but I guess they're also investing in it for the longer term since NFTs right now are pretty pretty garbage as of today. You know, <laughs> all these prices have just plummeted like crazy. I think it's interesting. Um, I, I definitely think buying some dips of these tokens is not, or of the, yeah, of these tokens is not a stupid idea, but it's hard to see which ones will stay around for a long time, right? A lot of these NFTs, they were overhyped by far. Even you could say some of the Borde Yacht Club, for example, those things. There's so much negativity around them that I'm thinking, well, maybe they can actually sack a lot more. Specifically, if we get into this recession, where people start to notice, okay, I might not want to be in the community and pay, you know, $400,000 just to be in that community and have a little picture. I know it's scarce, yada, yada, sure, sure, sure. But there's a lot of other NFTs that have way more utility. For example, some sort of land and some metaverses, how funny it might sound, uh, that might be worth it to buy more than... Uh, other ones but hey crypto.com wins a license approval to offer payment services from singapore regulator it's actually interesting how a lot of the companies that i know are moving from singapore over to dubai and well i guess they're still fighting for singapore even though singapore is not so progressive with it nowadays before they were they really were the fintech hub but now start to go away more and more and more and then our last piece of news that I think was interesting, Coinbase to replace Coinbase Pro with Coinbase Advanced Trade. They're basically getting rid of Coinbase Pro as a household name. They're going to just fully go on suite at um, just Coinbase as a whole. If you guys get my drift, before it was Coinbase and Coinbase Pro, uh, a lot of people didn't know exactly what the difference was, but the Coinbase Pro was just the professional trading counterpart. Where Coinbase is very simple, very easy. They're now just kind of... Oh, sorry. Uh, put everything into Coinbase. And so, yeah, it's not a really big update, but it's still kind of interesting. Then heading over into the charts, there's a couple of very interesting things that are happening. So as you can clearly see right now for yourself, I think you guys can all uh, notice that with me here. This is our previous stop from 2017-18. Right now, as it currently stands, Bitcoin price is getting really, really close. It's itching towards there. This is actually the... um. 
um, market cap for the altcoins and not for Bitcoin specifically, but they look very similar. We've hit that top basically and it bounced right back off. A lot of people, including me, are seeing this as a really bullish sign because the moment we close below that would be the first time, I'm not sure if it's ever, but the first time I think kind of ever that we close below such a um, you know bullish landmark, I guess. Then again, looking at, for example, the 200 EMA over on the weekly. As of this point, we're very far below it. And depending on how we do this week, it's going to determine quite a lot. And, and what I mean with that is, well, not actually this chart. I wanted to show you guys this one, but it's basically the same thing, right? This showcases the Bitcoin price relative to what we saw back in 2017-18. It's showcasing the exact same sentiments with um, as the altcoin market cap did. Here's the critical example over on the weekly and over on the monthly. Most importantly, over on the weekly, though. You can clearly see, putting it into logarithmic perspective here, you can see... We have to turn around this week. Why? Well, even though the, the tops here, we could talk about that for a little while. And it's important, mostly if you fill in the whole story. But more importantly to me, we've been holding this trend line for seven years, almost six, seven years or so. The only time we went below it was once here in March of 2020, when the big crisis was, you guys remember. However, we came right back upwards the next week. This time we've closed below it, which is negative. Okay, sure. But we still have a little bit of time to rectify this. So we can't come back in. However, are we going to do that though? Well, if we don't, then it's the first time that we've closed so significantly low on Bitcoin and on altcoins, for example, but also the first time in a while, or I guess in seven, six, seven years, that we are actually forming a breakout towards the downside with confirmation. Over on the monthly, I don't think we're going to actually close above it anymore. Um, we've never closed below this in years and years and years. However, the turnaround point is $31,500, which basically would mean that Bitcoin over the next seven to eight days would have to close above $31,000 to kind of continue on with the momentum which we saw um, back in March, where you know it, it tests below, but it doesn't close there. However, I just hope, kind of think, that maybe if we can turn this around over on the weekly, and then we can kind of keep it negative over on the monthly. It's at least only the first month down, so we don't get the confirmation yet. It could just be a fake out. Over on the weekly, however, we have to close then above 23.9 or less than 23.7, something of the sort thousand dollars, which would still be a very big turnaround, relatively huge, like 15% or so, but a little bit more feasible than $30,000 plus. Then again, if you're wondering, oh, how could Bitcoin do that? It's just going to depend on the stock market, honestly, guys. I mean, this week... Bitcoin closes at Sunday, the stock market closes on Friday, which obviously makes things a little bit more difficult because Bitcoin then has a little bit of free free reign, basically. As at this point, though, we've seen the stock market move really harshly down. Um, no, it's already two weeks ago as at this point, I think. Yeah, about two weeks ago, it moved really harshly down. Right now, it's recovering, though. It set a little base for itself and it's recovering towards the upside again. I guess it's the inflation and the interest rate numbers. They're all kind of cooling down and people are starting to get more comfortable with the situation. Um, but we can have, of course, a similar fake to what we saw a couple of weeks ago over in the 12th of May, where we went down pretty significantly, came back up for, you know, let's say about a week or so before coming back down, you know, getting a little relief. And, and that's the point I'm trying to make here. You don't know how the stock market is going to act, but Bitcoin sure as hell is following exactly what is happening to the S&P. Having said that, there's a couple of things I should quickly say. One, there's an $8 million competition, a trading competition going on over on Bybit right now. There's a couple of parts of that are pretty huge. One is that they have a launch pad over on Bybit where every single time you buy that token, we get a 10x or so, right? And what I mean with that is uh, I've shown it to you guys a couple of times before, but they have a section on here that is the launch pad. Where is it? I think in trading, right? Yeah, here we go. Launch pad, and every single time a token comes on there, I buy it and we 10x our money. It's only possible over on Bybit though, right? So just go ahead and check it out. But that's a side note. The $8 million competition is a team based competition which basically means if we win as a team the money is going to be split over all of y'all uh, the ones that have joined there's already 40 people in or so and the more the merrier because then we have a higher chance to win which is why i'm telling you if you're a trader and you have a bybit account make sure you go ahead and join and check it out because there's not really any downside and there's only upside i personally think you also get a couple of spins and whatnot speed zone loot here you have where I won myself a couple of dollars by just, you know, being part of the competition. Uh, for me, I don't really care personally. But if you're not that extremely, you know, good doing already, so to speak, make sure you just go ahead and spin with every time you get a, a thingy like this. Yeah, it's hard for me to explain. But I, I think you just get free draws for doing a couple of different things. Um, and so I honestly just want to say, go ahead and enter. Draw as many times as you are possible. You can see somewhere over here. I don't remember exactly where, what the, um, you know, what the, what uh, actions you have to go for to get more spins. But every single time, I think you win about a dollar or so. I won like let's say five dollars in total. But you might also win yourself and even like a 10x boost, meaning that you can um, 10x your current portfolio. 
if you have a thousand dollars in it, it will actually make sure that you get ten thousand dollars for absolutely free. You can also get yourself a mutant at Yacht Club, for example, and a couple of other things that I don't know the name of, for example. And to end it off here, in terms of how the crypto market is doing uh, in, in the analytics part, <laughs> we've talked about this before, but there's right now a huge increase in people starting to get into losses. You can see here we're in the blue, which we've only seen all the way back in March of 2020. A lot of signs are showcasing that we are in the exact same situation as we had all the way back then, right? You guys have also seen it in uh, this chart just now. Okay, that was not the best way to do it. Here we go. This situation, we are in a very, very clear, similar situation where a lot of people are at a loss right now and they're cashing it out. This, however, However, is uncashed out. It just says net unrealized profit and um, losses at this point. But I also have one here that showcases the actual uh, cashed out, the adjusted SOPR. It showcases right now since it's below one. Below one is right there, this little line. It showcases that more and more people are setting at a loss. And if this has a downwards sloping line, that actually means more and more people are starting to get at a loss, but they're um, accepting it, meaning even though they were already lost before, yada, 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 doesn't matter. They're actually deciding to cash out that loss right now. And that means less selling pressure, even though cons or, um, how do you say it? Like conversely, mm, the other way around, you might showcase and think, oh, you know, the lower, the more people that are cashing out, the more negative things get, right? Because more people are losing hope. Yes, but no. In theory, I understand what you guys are saying, that more and more people are starting to lose hope. So that is negative. But in practice, the more people that actually start to cash out, the less selling pressure there is because, well, more and more people start to get comfortable with that situation. They're not willing to just cash it at these prices, and so they're less likely to do so in the short term anyway. And so they're basically willing to ride the way up. The more weak hands that sell, the more strong hands that remain, right? Which is more basically positive sentiments. This was the exchange reserves, which means the lower that things go, also the lower the sell pressure is, as is basically how much money is being put onto the exchanges. This is not the in and out flow. It just showcases how much money is left in the exchanges. And again, the lower that it goes, the better for selling pressure. And here's again, the net unrealized loss, how many people are starting to get at a loss, which is right now at some crazy high points. Uh, but the more people that are cashing out, the better I think it also gets. And there's a little message here. It says here, an increasing trend in value means more investors are beginning to be in loss, indicating a possible bottom. Well, because things can only get better at some point, right? But to end it off here, Fear Green Index is right now at 11. Crazy low, but really, compared to what we saw a couple days ago at 6, people have also said to me, and this is also kind of funny, 5 I think was the lowest we've ever gone to, as at this point we're at 6. We're at an extreme amount of fear. People are extremely panicking. Whenever I look over on Twitter, a lot of people are saying that crypto will never recover again. Those are the points at which I like to buy, and that's exactly what I'm doing right now. I'm actually buying spot mostly over on Bybit nowadays as well. I don't know. I've really started to make this my main exchange, which I think is rather funny. But you also get a couple thousand dollars worth of bonuses if you um, go through the rewards program. Just sign up with the link down below, and I'm not sure where it is on the computer website for it. Maybe you can only see it if you're logged in. Uh, but go to the, let me see it on my phone here, what the exact name is supposed to be. Where's the phone, though? Mm, there we go. So if you go inside your Bybit account, there's this thing which is called the Rewards Hub is what it is called. Mm, it, it used to always be at the top here, but I think they took it off, so you have to look it up a little bit better. Maybe you can only see it when you're logged in, though. Mm, but they changed it around somewhere. Just go ahead and look up the Rewards Hub. Ah, there we go, right? In this little section right there, there's a Rewards Hub. Just check for yourself if you have a couple of bonuses. Sometimes, even if you've not done anything yet, you might be able to get yourself a couple tens or a couple hundred dollars worth of, um, of, of funds, I guess, for free or bonuses for free. Just go ahead and check out the Rewards Hub. There's no, literally no negative side to checking it out, and you might actually have some crazy amount of money sitting in there. Or you look through and see what you have to do to claim additional bonuses and maybe go through that system. You know? Not financial advice, um, the rest of this video. But this is, I guess, a really nice thing, the rewards app. Just go ahead and check it out. And that was it for today's video. Hopefully you guys all enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you press the like button and subscribe. And I'll see you guys again in another crypto video. Later.